Good morning. Welcome to the disciplinary meeting of the Board of Vocational Nursing and Psychiatric Technicians. This meeting is being held on Thursday, November 3rd, 2016 at 1625 North Market Boulevard, Sacramento, California. I would like to call this meeting to order. At this time, could I please have um, our board members introduce themselves starting on my far left? John Deerking, public member. Donna Norton, public member, or I mean LVN member. <laughs> John Vertito, state nursing educator. Good morning, Andrew Moreno, board vice president and public member. Tammy Indozo, LVN member. Good morning, Bernice Basti Martinez, public member. Good morning, I am Todd DeBronstein, psychiatric, techn psychiatric technician member. Thank you. Good morning, Eric Ma, public member. Thank you. Let the record indicate that we do have a quorum. At this time, I would like to call for the Pledge of Allegiance. Would uh, our fellow board member and veteran Donna Norton please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance at this time? Please stand. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, a nation under God. Thank you. Before I turn the meeting over to uh, Judge King, who will preside over the hearings, I would like to thank the members of the audience who have joined us today. For the sake of time, we will not be introducing everyone who has signed in, but we thank you for being here and we appreciate your presence. That leads us to the next agenda item number five, public comment on items not on the agenda. Individuals may appear before the board at this time to discuss items not on the agenda. The board may not discuss or take action on any item raised during this public comment section except to decide whether to place the matter on the agenda for a future meeting. Is there anyone that would like to address the board at this time? Okay, I'm not seeing anyone come to the front. The purpose of the hearings today is for the board to consider petitions for reinstatement or uh, of licenses that have been revoked by the board. The proceedings are a serious matter and proper decorum must be maintained. Please take a moment right now to ensure that your phones are turned off or in silent mode. Also, please make sure that you keep as quiet as possible during the hearings and that you refrain from making comments or any expressions that may disrupt the hearings. Your cooperation in keeping these proceedings orderly is appreciated. At this time, I would like to turn the meeting over to Judge King to begin the hearings. Good morning, we are before the Board of Vocational Nursing and Psychiatric Technicians. Today's date is November 3rd, 2016. The time is approximately 9 a.m. in the morning, and we are at the Department of Consumer Affairs building located in Sacramento, California. This is the date, time, and place noticed for hearing in the, um, set for hearing in the notices of hearing. We are here this morning to review six petitions. My name is Tiffany King. I am an administrative law judge with the Office of Administrative Hearings, and I've been assigned to preside over three of these matters this morning. Um, will all of the members of the board please again identify themselves for the record, starting first with the board member on my farthest right. Uh, Eric Ma. Todd DeBronstein. Bernice Baste Martinez. Tammy Indozo. Samantha James Perez. Andrew Moreno. John Vertito. John Deerking. Thank you very much, and I will note that a quorum of the board is present. We will now call our first petition, which is the petition for um, early termination of probation by Eric Sisk. This is OAH case number 2016-090895. May I please take the appearance of the Deputy Attorney General for the record. Good morning. I'm Leslie Bergmeier, Deputy Attorney General. I'm appearing on behalf of the people of the state of California pursuant to government code section 11522 and my appearance is under that same um, code statute for all of the six petitions today. Um, first I would like to mark for identification 
and offer into evidence as Exhibit 1 the original petition package with accompanying documents. We also received some additional documents from Mr. Sisk this morning, and I will be uh, bringing those up with me. It's my understanding that the board members and the petitioner have been provided with a copy of the same set of this exhibit, except for the new uh, documents this morning. Um, so the new documents are a order for dismissal under Penal Code Section 1203.4, and this is the um, uh, case against Mr. Sisk, and I'm looking at which county this is in. But it's case number VCT 013202-93, a second order for dismissal. And um, case number VCT 013202-93, um, sorry, VCT 013202-93. And um, I was told that there were um, one copies for three of his cases and multiple copies for one of the other cases, but um, they seem to be for all the same cases. So I'll let Mr. Um, Sisk explain that when it's his turn. But right now, may I approach, Your Honor? Well, I, I oh. want to get the appearance of Mr. Sisk first. Okay. I, I, okay. Sorry about that. that that's okay. <laughs> so I will note, Mr. Sisk, you are present and you're representing yourself today. Is that correct? That is correct. And were you advised that you could have retained an attorney at your own expense to represent yes, you today? Yes, I was. And having been so advised, you decided to represent yourself, correct? Correct. Okay. So before the hearing and off the record, I did meet with you and the other petitioners to explain the procedures and what's going to happen today, correct? Um, as I explained, the Deputy Attorney General will proceed first, uh, presenting the petition and giving an orientation a background for this matter. After that, you will have an opportunity to um, testify, submit any documents you would like to, um, subject to cross-examination or objection by the Deputy Attorney General, and you'll also be given a chance to call any additional witnesses who you would like to speak on your behalf. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have any questions before we get started this morning? No. Okay. And lastly, I will mention, as, as we discussed off the record, the Board is particularly concerned and interested in your um, efforts at rehabilitation, and that's what they're most interested in hearing about this morning. I'm going to go ahead and, and swear him in, and then if okay. you want, that way if you start asking him questions, fine. we don't. That's fine. Mr. Sisk, if you could please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly state under penalty of perjury that the evidence you will give in this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Say it a little louder. I do. Thank you very much. Mr. All right. Okay, uh, may I approach? Bergmeier has handed me four exhibits, which I've marked as respondents A through D. The first one um, is an order for dismissal pursuant to Penal Code 1203.4. Case number is V as in Victor, C as in Cat, T as in Tom, 013202-93, and I've I have marked this as respondents A, or petitioners A. This is the case where we do have um, sufficient copies, so I will pass these out to the board members. So I have three more exhibits, which we only have one copy. So, Madam President, I can either have the board members review them. Okay. So what's been uh, marked as Petitioner's Exhibit B is an order for dismissal pursuant to Penal Code 1203.4. 
Case number is V as in Victor, C as in Cat, T as in Tom, 01372-02. What has been marked as Petitioner's Exhibit 3 is an order for dismissal pursuant to Penal Code 1203.4. Case number is T as in Tom, C as in Cat, M as in Movie, uh, 151382. And lastly, what has been marked as Petitioner's Exhibit D is an order for dismissal pursuant to Penal Code Section 1203.4. Case number is T as in Tom, C as in Cat, M as in Movie, 157870. Bergmeier, are there any objections to my um, entering into evidence? No. So A through D are admitted? Exhibit 1 consists of the following. Petitioner's probation report prepared by his probation monitor, and it shows that he is in compliance with all of his terms and conditions of probation. Next is the petition for early termination of pro uh, probation and supporting documents, followed by the license certi certification, then the notice of hearing and related correspondence, followed by quarterly reports and work performance evaluations, then probation education course certificate, then support group attendance, probation correspondence follows that. Then um, the last document is the 2012 board decision. And those documents have been marked A through I, uh, sections A through I in the um, packets previously provided to the members. And this morning the originals were provided to Judge King. Request that um, they also be admitted into evidence as Exhibit 1. Is there any objection, Mr. Sisk? No. Exhibit 1 is admitted. Next, I'd like to present a summary of the case. Um, a statement of, uh, excuse me, the application for the LVN license was denied, followed by a, a statement of issues by the executive officer of the board. The um, statement of issues explains the reasons of the denial based on substantially related convictions. There were five convictions for um, DUIs, driving under the influence of alcohol, and um, the 1993, the 2001, the 2005, and the 2006 occurred in California. Then there was one that occurred in North Carolina. Other grounds were um, he, um, for the denial where he committed acts that if he had been licensed, he would have been subject to discipline. The um, statement of issues was served. There was a stipulated settlement in this matter adopted by the board and effective on November 21, 2012, which put Mr. Sisk on probation. His license was issued, revoked, stayed, five years probation, standard terms and conditions one through 13. Optional terms were chemical dependency, support and recovery groups abstain from controlled substances and use of alcohol, submit biological samples, and then here today we're um, uh, meeting for his petition for early termination of probation filed September 19, 2016. The petition seems um, straightforward. I believe he answered truthfully in all respects. However, he forgot one DUI he mentioned four, but there was a fifth because of the North Carolina. Um, he has had consistent employment history at Rain Tree Convalescent Home in Fresno, first as a certified nurse assistant for three years, followed by a vocational nurse from November 25, 2012 to the present. He's completed, um, as previously mentioned, he's completed all the terms and conditions up to, um, to through today. His date of sobriety is June 5, 2007. There are multiple attachments to the petition. Um, briefly, letters of references, negative um, uh, tests for alcohol, uh, he, his completion for his 18-month DUI class and program, proof of payment of court fees, training and education certificates. Uh, I'm prepared to ask, uh, proceed with questions at this time or later if that's what you prefer. Thank you. <coughs> I think we'll have the testimony of Mr. Sisk first. Okay.
you have any questions for? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I thought you meant you were going to have him do a narrative, and then I would follow with questions. You want me to yeah. ask questions? No, we can do it that way. Okay. So, Mr. Sisk, now is your opportunity to make your statement to the board and any evidence you would like them to hear about of your rehabilitation. Okay. I appreciate this opportunity to stand before you to request an early release of my probation on my LVN license. I have completed four of the five years of probation with no incident. I have complied with all rules and regulations of the probation period. I have not forgotten about the DUIs from my past. I thank God every day that I didn't hurt anyone or myself in my lack of judgment and poor display of public safety. I'm making this request because, my <clears throat> because of the many life changes that my family and I are experiencing. My wife and children live in North Carolina now and we are separated. My wife's father, who is very sick with bone cancer, lives in Pennsylvania. My father, who my wife and kids live with now in North Carolina, is very sick as well. My wife currently is taking care of him as well as making trips to Pennsylvania to help care for her father, all while raising both children alone. I want very much to be reunited with my family. By having this probationary license, it's very difficult and preventing me from being with them. I have submitted recommendations from my peers and my professors in hopes for you to see that I have become a positive member of society. I chose this profession to do great things and to give back. It doesn't excuse what I've done in the past by any means. I am granted an early release of probation. I can move to North Carolina and be with my family again. Thank you, Mr. Sisk. Ms. Bergmeier, do you have any questions? Um, I do. Thank you. Mr. Sisk, as you sit here today, do you have any criminal convictions other than those that were um, alleged in the underlying statement of issues? No, I do not. Do you have any current um, criminal or civil charges filed against you in this state or any other state? No. Do you have any current arrests pending against you in this state or any other state? No. In your um, documentation, you describe yourself as a, quote, recovered, close quote, alcoholic. What do you mean by recovered? Well, um, going to AA over the um, past 10 years, um, they say that 10 year is a mark. Some believe that after 10 years of sobriety, you are recovered. Some of them will tell you that there's no such thing as a recovered alcoholic. You're just recovering and live with the disease every day. I believe after 10 years that alcohol does not affect me anymore and I've moved on with that. You have um, told us that you had attended AA. Do you have any plans for continuing with attendance at AA? I do. I started AA before I was mandated from the board to go to AA and I quit drinking before I even got into the nursing profession. And I do go more than just the uh, obligated terms of my probation. I believe it's uh, two times a month the board recommends that I go and I usually go once a week. And what is your support system? Uh, my immediate family, my wife, my kids, my mom, dad, my brother, uh, church, uh, a few close friends that I have. Do you know what your triggers are that would trigger you to start drinking alcohol again? Yeah, I don't believe there is any triggers at this point in my life. Uh, it's been 10 years. Um, I deal with it and live with it every day. Uh, in today's society, mm, alcohol is everywhere. Everywhere you go, alcohol. But it, um, it doesn't affect me. It doesn't bother me not to drink when I go anywhere. I just choose not to because of what has happened to me in the past. And, in the past, when you drank alcohol, um, w um, why did you do it? Well, I'm beginning to uh, be social, but then it become an addictive pattern over time. So you mentioned that you can stay away from alcohol. If you're in a situation where there's alcohol, what, what do you do to ensure that you don't start drinking alcohol again? Well, if there's alcohol around, I just have uh, soda or iced tea or bottled water. I just, I just choose not to drink. It doesn't affect me to go to restaurants or bars with my family or friends when everybody else is, you know, having a beer or a glass of wine with dinner. I just order iced tea. Um, if your vocation 
if your um, excuse me um, probation is terminated early, what are your plans for continuing in your profession? Uh, I'm currently doing my prereqs for my RN. I would like to work in the ER in the hospital as an RN. Do you plan to continue uh, working with your current employer until you're able to move to North Carolina? I do. Uh, I stayed behind to, we have a house in Fresno or in Clovis. I'm going to sell the house uh, either when my probation is terminated or when it ends in the next November and then I'll move after I sell the house. Do you have any job prospect in North Carolina? Have you started that process? Or? Yeah, I've looked on my, you know, the apps, you know, the job apps on, on my phone as far as uh, jobs, but I haven't co contacted anybody yet. Very briefly, could you describe to us um, what your duties are at your current employment? Um, I'm an LVN charge nurse on the day shift. I'm also a supervisor um, of the day shift LVNs. I pass and uh, administer medication to 25 residents that I'm in charge of each shift. Uh, I'm in charge of their doctor's appointments, um, carrying out any new orders. I'm also a treatment nurse. I do all my own treatments. Uh, I'm in charge of uh, six CNAs per shift each day. Uh, also charting on the, the computer as far as each resident's health condition. Thank you. Uh, do you plan on pursuing your vocational nurse license in North Carolina? Yes, I, I do plan on getting my LVN license in North Carolina. Uh, are you aware that if your North Carolina license is disciplined, then this board can take disciplinary action against you based upon North Carolina discipline? Yeah, I spoke with the board in North Carolina. How can the board be assured that your past conduct and problems are behind you? Well, it has been 10 years since I've uh, gotten any trouble, or, and then also my sobriety dates uh, have been 10 years. Um, I choose not to drink. I've separated myself from that uh, course of action. I, um, I do other things to keep myself busy. I'm an assistant coach of my daughter's soccer team. I also coach my son's golf team. Uh, I attend church, church functions on a weekly basis. Uh, I give back to the community by working in soup kitchen and homeless shelters, uh, go to the gym three or four times a week. <clears throat> so you keep yourself busy? I do. Oh, okay. Um, no further questions at this time. Mr. Sisk, do you have any other witnesses you would like to call on your behalf? I do not. And other than... Uh, the exhibits that were previously marked A through D, do you have any additional documentation you would like to submit to the board? No, I don't. At this time, I will open it to the board for questions. I'll start with the board member to my furthest right, which is Mr. Ma. Uh, I have no questions. Mr. Sisk, I have one question. Sure. Where, where are you in the process of getting your LPN license in North Carolina? I've appeared in front of the North Carolina board. Um, they prefer that I write out my probation here, well, that's poor choice of words, complete my probation here uh, before moving to North Carolina. I can move now, but they want to start me on their own probation if I'm still on probation here, which is basically the same thing but three years instead of five years. So it doesn't matter to them if I only have six months left here, they're going to start me over at three years there. So they suggested that I wait till I'm off probation here then I can just apply for a regular license in North Carolina that won't be any subject to any conditions of probation. Thank you. I have no other questions. Do you have any questions? I do. Um, thank you for sharing that information with us. Just a question about your plan or your vision of developing a support network in North Carolina. Can you talk to us a bit about that? Well, I have family there. My wife and kids are there. My dad is there. Um, also, they have, I've reached out to local uh, chapters in the AA. And also, um, if I do apply and receive a job at a hospital, there's um, nursing support groups. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> 
No questions? Good morning. <clears throat> if you um, were not planning to move to North Carolina, you would not be seeking um, early termination of your probation, is that correct? No, I don't think so. And as you stated um, in your opening statement that you're moving to North Carolina not under the best um, circumstances, as you stated, have you given thought as to um, your recovery and how strong you are in that recovery, um, provided that you are moving into a situation where possibly in the future there's going to be some challenges? Um, how secure and strong do you feel in your recovery? Yeah, I have thought about that, and at least trying times for my family, but uh, I feel very strong after 10 years of sobriety, and I want to be there for my dad, let alone my uh, father-in-law, to help them, and being a nurse, I feel I can be a lot of support to them. Was there ever a conversation, or was it ever possible um, that your father moved to California? Um. He has thought about moving to California, but all of my wife's family is on the East Coast, so it's easier for us to go there. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> thank you, Your Honor. Just wanted to be sure. Um, Mr. Sisk, um, reviewing your records, um, just want to get clarification. Have you requested modification of your probation since you were placed on it? Um, you know, I looked into some home health and hospice, um, speaking with my uh, probation officer um, after these catastrophic events have occurred the last year and a half, she informed me that I couldn't modify probation and ask for early release of probation, early termination. So I had looked into it, yes, but I didn't pursue it. Okay. And earlier, <clears throat> it's in the record that on June of 2013, six months after you um, were placed on probation, um, you did agree to all the requirements connected with probation, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Then June uh, 30th, 2013, you requested modification to decrease the number of meetings to attend um, Alcoholics Anonymous? That's correct. Um, why? You agreed to it and the first to the standards that we set up and six months later you're already requesting modification. Can you explain that please? Yeah, I talked to my probation officer in the beginning when she uh, told me the terms and conditions and I told her that it, how long it had been that since I've been sober and I told her I didn't feel I needed to go. I went on my own as it was but I didn't need to attend as many meetings as possible with my busy life schedule and she said well let, let's just Sign it here now, and then in six months of showing the board that you've attended these meetings, then you can request for modification. Can you give me an example of family business, or you said your life was busy, so can you just kind of give me an example or a sample of kind of what your life was busy with? Yeah, like coaching, uh, golf for my son, uh, coaching uh, soccer for my daughter, uh, working full-time job, uh, going to school at night after work for my RN uh, prereqs and uh, attending church functions. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, just one comment. Uh, congratulations on your continued sobriety. Ten years is indeed a significant milestone in my opinion. Thank, Thank you. you. Are there any further questions from the board? Bergmeier, do you have any additional questions? No, I do not. This time, this will conclude your, your hearing, Mr. Sisk. Um, the case is submitted, and we can go off the record. Thank you. Thank you. There's um, sensitive information on the document he gave us. It has his date of birth. I don't know if we want to collect these or redact it from the record. I'm not sure how you proceed with that. Just at the top. Yeah. 
reporters back and we'll, we'll make a note of that. You guys don't want a copy of it, or? Wait, if we need to go back on the record for one minute, is that okay? For the, for the official record, correct. Okay, so let's go back on the record. Um, so it was, it was pointed out by Mr. Ma, uh, we went off the record, that on uh, exhibits A through D, um, petitioner's date of birth is indicated in the caption up top. So I will uh, redact the date of birth from the official record, and the board members, if you're going to keep your copies, I ask that you cross that out, or otherwise uh, shred the document after today's meeting. Is there anything further that we need to talk about before we close the record on this matter? Okay, hey, then the case is submitted and the record is closed. Thank you very much. And we can go Thank off you. the record. Lopez, is your attorney present? Correct. Ready? Okay, let's go on the record. Good morning. We are on the record before the Board of Vocational Nursing and Psychiatric Technicians. Today's date is November 3rd, 2016. The time is approximately 9.40 in the morning, and we are at the Department of Consumer Affairs Building in Sacramento, California. My name is Tiffany King. I am an administrative law judge with the Office of Administrative Hearings, and I've been assigned to preside over these matter, this matter this morning. Uh, before we went on the record, we did uh, have the board members identify themselves for the record, and I will note that we still have a board quorum present. Uh, the first case that we're calling now is the petition for early termination of probation filed by Evelyn Lopez. This is OAH case number 2016-090893. And if I could please have the appearance of the Deputy Attorney General for the record. Leslie Bergemeyer appearing under Government Code Section 11522. Thank you. And if I could please have the appearance of Ms. Lopez Counsel. Thank you, Victor Herrera, on behalf of Ms. Lopez. Sir, can you please spell your last name? H E R R E R A. Thank you, Mr. Herrera. Bergmeier, whenever you'd like to begin. Okay, thank you. Um, Actually, I'm sorry, before um, I want to swear in my client. Well, I thought you were going to do, the, are you going to do the exhibits first, or do you want to? Um, whatever you prefer, Your Honor. I, I can go ahead. But let's do the exhibits first, and then our swear in. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'd like to have marked for identification and admitted into evidence exhibit number one, which are the original documents for today's matter. May I approach? Exhibit number one includes um, sections A through H. Section A is the petitioner's probation report. And according to the probation monitor, Ms. Lopez is not in compliance with all of her terms and conditions. And the areas that she's not in compliance are notification to her employer of um, her um, 
employment when she was first put on probation and the employment requirements and limitations that she must complete six months of continuous consecutive work as a licensed vocational nurse prior to um, six months of six months prior to the termination and I checked with the board and there is not a pending request for a petition to revoke probation because the six months ended in September and that's when I believe the petition was filed and she's here today so they're basically waiting the outcome of today's hearing. Here's another violation for supervision. So um, the petition for early termination is in Section B. Section C is the license certification. Section D, notice of hearing and related correspondence. Section E, quarterly reports. And I note that the problems with the employment um, provisions were um, set forth in the probation quarterly reports. Section F is completion of probation education courses. Section, section G is probation com correspondence. Section H is the underlying decision, 2014, that placed Ms. Lopez on probation for three years subject to the terms and conditions in that document. It was effective March 15, 2014. Offer Exhibit 1 and 2 evidence. Any objection to Exhibit 1? No, Your Honor. Exhibit 1 is admitted. At this time, um, would you like me to give the license history summary of the case? Yes, please. Okay. Um, the um, application for the vocational nurse license was denied. The uh, statement of issues setting forth the grounds for the denial was filed on, in January of 2013. The causes for, for denial were a 2003 conviction on a guilty plea to violating Welfare and Institutions Code, Section 10980, Subdivision C2, a misdemeanor by obtaining aid by misrepresentation. She was put on three years probation for that violation and it ended in approximately late October 2006. The next conviction on a plea of no, con uh, of no contest to violating the penal code section 484 petty theft was in 2004, a misdemeanor placed on two years probation ending approximately October of 2006 Document show it was expunged on November 25, 2009. The next conviction was in uh, December 2006 on a guilty plea to violating Penal Code Section 459 burglary. It was a misdemeanor, three years probation, and it ended approximately late December 2009. Other related causes were acts of dishonesty, fraud, or deceit, acts that are grounds for license denial, with uh, the basis of a conviction. Ms. Um, Lopez also had a pharmacy board citation. I bring this up only because it was included in the underlying statement of issues, later found to be an error. But she had been licensed as a pharmacy technician from 1992 to 2008. When the license expired, it's now canceled. In February 14th of 2014, the board adopted a stipulated settlement for probation that it was effective on March 15, 2014. It placed Ms. Lopez on three years probation, standard terms 1 through 13. There was no cost recovery because it was a statement of issues. Her license was issued on March 17, 2014. It's scheduled to terminate unless renewed, or expire, I mean, unless renewed on um, March 14, 2017. And um, I may have made a mistake on that. Oh, excuse me. Her probation is scheduled to terminate March 14th, 2017. Her license will expire March 31, 2018, unless renewed. Um, I briefly mentioned the violations that are mentioned in Section A. Um, I believe Ms. Lopez will be able to explain the problems with the employment um, provisions. Um, the petition for early termination of probation was filed and it looks like all the um, questions were answered straightforward. She has not had any um, court or law problems since the last conviction. Um, 
You did not present any character reference letters. There's proof of employment um, since 2012. The quarterly reports do show that Ms. Lopez was hired at, to work as a licensed vocational nurse, it looks like at skilled nursing centers, and then um, within days she was fired. And she stated in her document, it's because the employers didn't want to deal with her being on probation. And um, that is the conclusion of my summary, and at the appropriate time I have questions to ask. Thank you. Uh, we'll turn it over to Ms. Lopez at this time. So Mr. Herrera, I will swear her in at this point. Ms. Lopez, if you could please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly state under penalty of perjury that the evidence you will give in this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Herrera? Thank you. Uh, I do have some additional evidence that I wanted to submit to the board if they want to have it. it most of it is it's all historical documentation for her application in the first place. I just wanted to make sure that the board had a complete record. I wasn't sure. Sorry, is this better? Um, um, I have some additional information that I wanted to submit to the court, um, but I wasn't sure if it was necessary as it is largely historical regarding her original application. I did not find in the regulations if you guys had full access to her original application. Um, so I do have that information if you guys need it. You're happy to submit uh, anything that you, that you want to submit. Oh, thank you. I can't tell you how much consideration there is <laughs> any particular particular document. May I approach? Yes, please. <laughs> and this is all one exhibit. No, it's. Uh, I mean, I have multiple copies, but. It's three exhibits. Okay. So Mr. Herrera has handed me three exhibits. The first one, which I will mark, is Petitioner's Exhibit A. Um, the first page has official student grade transcript. It is several pages long, and it appears to be from Summit College in Colton, California. The second exhibit, which will be marked as Petitioner's Exhibit B, is uh, Ms. Lopez's application for vocational nurse licensure filed with the board. And the third document, which I will mark as uh, Petitioner's Exhibit C, the first page is a cover letter dated December 16, 2015, um, addressed to Ms. Lopez and from Rocio Lamas from the Enforcement Program Manager for the, um, for the board. So I will pass these packets down. It's like they, they've already been collated, so uh, A, B, C as we go down. Ms. Bergmeier, were you given a copy of A, B, yes. and C? Yes. And do you have any objection to A, B, and C being admitted at this time? No. A, B, and C are admitted. Or whenever you're ready to begin with your questioning. Thank you. Ms. Lopez, are you currently employed? Yes. And where are you currently employed? Walmart, uh, Highland, California. And how long? I'm sorry, could you say the city again? Highland, California. How long have you been employed there? Six months. And what are your job responsibilities at this location? I'm associate produce. Of, I'm an associate of the produce department. So I stock, clean, customer service. And do you ever go to any other locations? No. Are you currently looking for additional or other employment? Yes, I am because I'm currently only employed uh, part time. And what are you doing to find additional employment? Um, I've been sending resumes out. Are there any particular uh, services that you're using or just online type of applications? Online type of applications and fax machine. 
And are you currently looking for jobs in the healthcare field? Uh, Non-emergency medical transportation. What are you doing to try to find jobs in that particular field? Again, applying in person via internet and fax. Why are you here today? Yes, I'm petitioning to have the uh, revocation removed from my licensure. And why are you seeking that early termination of probation? Um, I found that it's very difficult to keep a job or even obtain a job with it. And if the early termination of probation was granted, how do you believe it would impact your life? I'll be able to support myself better, my family, uh, obtain a better domicile. And are you aware that when you were granted your, I'm going to call it a provisional license, that you had certain terms and conditions to your probation? Yes, I am. And do you believe you have substantially complied with the terms and conditions of your probation? Yes, I have. Go through some of that. In the past two and a half years, have you been employed in the healthcare field? Yes. How many times? Twice. The first time, where were you employed? Valley Healthcare, San Bernardino, California. And how long were you employed there? Three days. You know why you were let go? Because of my uh, probation status. And during those three days, what were your job responsibilities? Um, normal LVN responsibilities. They were uh, te training me to pass medications. While you were there, did you actually pass medications to patients? No. I was learning their computer system. During that period of time, did you work with any patients? No, I did not. Were you to working with the support staff, nurses, and doctors? Can you repeat the question? Let me rephrase. Did you only work with the doctors and nurses yes. at that time? Okay. And when you were there at Valley Healthcare, how long was training? It was uh, presumed to be one week. And when were you let go? I'm sorry, uh, it, can you give us a specific date as when you were let go? I'm not sure of the exact date. I know that it was um, three days after the telephone call asking me if I would like the job. And when you got the job with Valley Healthcare, did you inform the board in front of you of the job? Yes, I called Ms. Coop and uh, left a message on her recorder. I wrote a letter. And did you inform the board of your termination? Can you please repeat? Did you inform the board of your termination at Valley Health? Oh yes, I did. How did you do that? I uh, called her on the phone and spoke to her and then she said uh, put it in writing and send it within five days. When you say her, is that Miss Coop? Yes. And who did you work for with your second employment in the healthcare field? The Life House. Where was that or where is that located? Riverside, California. Call when you got that employment. Uh, not the exact date, it was just a few months ago. 2016? Yes. And how long were you employed there? Again, uh, three days. And while you were there, what were your job responsibilities? To administer medications, all LVN responsibilities. And did you work with any patients during that period of time? No, I did not. You're going through training during that period of time? Yes. How long was the training supposed to last? One week. And do you recall why you were let, why you were let go? 
Uh, yes, uh, certain people on staff did not approve of my revocation, therefore they let me go. Did you inform the board here of your employment at um, Lifehouse in Riverside? Yes, I did. How did you do that? I called her on the telephone and asked her if it was okay to take this uh, job. She said, yes, go ahead. Is that Ms. Coop? Yes. Did you inform the board of your termination? Yes, I did. How did you do that? Again, through the telephone and mail. And if you don't know, that's fine, but do you recall when you sent that letter? Uh, as soon as the, the day that they terminated me, I wrote, sat and wrote the letter. Call why you were put on probation. Uh, yes, because of uh, my past. And what in your past was problematic? The, uh, oh, my marriage. My marriage is what caused this problem. My marriage is what caused this problem. And, and what problems did your marriage cause? I, well, it caused me to steal. Let's, let's delve into that. Uh, how many crimes have you been committed, convicted of in the past? Three. When was the first one? It was in 2002. What was it for? Uh, it was for food stamp fraud. And was it a misdemeanor or a felony? Misdemeanor. Given probation? Yes. Do you recall the terms and conditions of that probation? Yes, it was just to stay out of trouble. And did you comply with those terms and conditions? Yes. And when was your second conviction? 2004 or six something, I don't know. Sorry. And what was that one for? It was for petty theft. And was it a misdemeanor or a felony? Felony. And did you comply with the terms and conditions of that probation? Yes. And when was your third conviction? It was in 2006. What, one, what was that for? Uh, it was also for petty theft. Was that a misdemeanor or a felony? I believe it was a misdemeanor. And did you comply with the terms and conditions of probation for that conviction? Yes. And since your last conviction, have you had any negative contact with law enforcement? No. Have you had your convictions expunged? Yes. And you mentioned that these were caused by your marriage. Can you please expand on that? Well, my husband, I allowed my husband to push me to do the wrong things. What do you mean by that? He, well, he would suggest that I do the wrong things, and I went ahead and did them. And when you say the wrong things, what do you mean? What were you doing? Stealing. Were you acting as an accomplice, or were you the one actually stealing? One time I actually stole. The second time I, was, I went to get him out of the store. I didn't want him to steal anymore, so... Now, in the past decade since your last conviction, have you been able to determine what factors led to you committing those crimes besides your husband? And besides my husband, it was just a bad marriage that I was in. And what have you done to avoid or mitigate the problems of your marriage? I divorced. And when did you get divorced? It was finalized 2008. And since 2008, do you have any contact with him? No. Are you currently active in any community organizations? My church. 
And how often do you participate with your church? Um, two to three times a, a month. Is that the volunteer work that you do? Yes. What kind of volunteer work do you do? I help uh, housekeeping. Their work that you do volunteers? Oh, sorry. oh yes, I work in the food ministry now occasionally for them. And what does that entail? We give food to the needy. And are you in any positions of authority or leadership with these organizations? No. Belong to any support groups? No, I don't. You have a support network back home. Yes, I have my parents, my daughter, my brother. And are you currently responsible for anyone else in your life financially, or do you treat them as a dependent in any manner? No, but I help my children as much as I can, even though they're older. Other questions at this time? Um, yes, thank you. Ms. Lopez, do you understand that the board takes your criminal misconduct very seriously in relation to your license? Yes, I do. As you sit here today, do you have any pending arrests in this state or any jurisdiction? Can you repeat that, please? As you sit here today, do you have any arrests against you in California or any other state? I do not. As you sit here today, do you have any pending criminal ch uh, charges against you in this state or any other state? No. Um, how long were you married to your husband that you say led you to your criminal misconduct? 25 years. You say 25 or? Yes. Okay, 25 years. Okay. Did you seek counseling for your issues stemming from your relationship with your husband? Yes, I did. Did you seek counseling in relation to your criminal misconduct? No, I did not. The two places where you were employed, were they skilled nursing centers? Yes. Um, you say for each of them that you work there for uh, approximately three days each. Do you have a letter that um, can verify why you were fired? No, I don't. In working in a um, skilled nursing home, is it true that you would have access to the patient's belongings? Yes, that's true. And your colleagues' belongings? Yes. And also to um, medications? Yes. How can the board be reassured that you will not steal if you're employed as an LVN where you have access to the belongings and drugs? I know absolutely that it's not right to do such a thing, and I wouldn't do it. It's not right, and so you won't do it? Yes. Um, I have no further comments at this time. Mr. Herr, do you have any additional questions? Um, no, thank you. At this time, I'll open it up for questions from the board, starting with Mr. Ma. Yeah, I have no questions. Bronstein? Can you uh, estimate as close as possible, um, how many LVM positions have you applied for? I would say about 100. And is that direct applications to employers or just putting something out on the internet? Direct applications to employers. And how many calls back have you gotten? 
About eight. So you had about eight interviews? Yes. And of those, you got two positions, both terminated in three days? Yes. Okay. Um, and you, how do you select the hundred or so uh, places that you chose to work? Location, also size of facility. I just decide if it's somewhere I want to work and I go and apply. Are you open to working at a, a facility that may be bigger or smaller or maybe a different type of clientele than what you've typically applied for? Yes. Thank you. I have no other questions. Dr. Day Martinez? No questions. <laughs> Good morning. A little bit ago you said, I allowed my husband to push me to do the wrong things. So I appreciate the responsibility <coughs> that you're taking in that statement. But I'm wondering now, today, what would stop you today from allowing someone else to push you to do the wrong things? I never want to be in the trouble that I was in again. There's just no way that I would ever go back to that type of lifestyle. And in your, um, in your petition, it says, why should the board grant your petition for early termination? And you say, um, I have done my best to stay employed, stay active, my family, and to avoid negative stressors that would lead me to break the law again. What are those negative stressors for you? For me, it would be uh, drinking or drugs, um, lack of un unemployment. And how do you stay away from those? What steps do you take? I attend church frequently, uh, have a lot of family time. Thank you. Good morning. The positions that you mentioned where you were hired and then sub subsequently let go three days later, um, is it your understanding that they learned after your hiring of your probationary license or did that not come up before? Can you explain to me how that came about? Yes. I let them know before that I have the revocation. Uh, maybe the, the interviewee, the interviewer will prove it. But then again, the DON or maybe the medical director will not approve it. And when, um, how were you informed that uh, you were going to be released from those positions? They just uh, reply, I'm sorry, we cannot use you because of your probation status. Was that um, over the phone call? Was that in an email? Was that in a letter? How did that, how did you receive that notification? Verbal contact, verbal communication. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Lopez, um, to add on to my colleague's questions, um, did you submit your application, say, with the resume or something? Resume, a curriculum vitae, something to showcase your past history, education, experiences, and such? Yes, I do. Is your uh, probationary license listed on that um, on that resume or CV or anything else? Yes, anything? it is. So that means when you went into your interview, um, your potential employers knew right away that you were a probationary licensee. That's correct. I let them know. Yes. So you were upfront about it, basically. Yes. Um. Thank you, Your Honor. You actually have not worked as an LVN since you got out of school, right? except for the, the six days that you were in an orientation. Yes, that's true. And you said that you applied for 100, got interviews for eight, got hired at two. Since the two that you got let go, have you? are you continuing to apply? I've been instructed by my attorney not to apply now. But I would like to, yes, as soon as he allows me to. So, I, 
I guess the issue that I'm having that I need you to clear up for me is the connection between the crimes that you committed and why those things would, why the board looks at them so seriously and what you could do to alleviate the thought in our mind that might perhaps continue this behavior. I would never continue that behavior. I love my life the way it is. It's, um, it has nothing to do with criminal activity. I'm very happy. I will never change it. So when you were let go by these employers and you had these face-to-face -face comments with them, did you offer them that you were a changed person, that you know someone has to give you a, a chance, and did you have conversation? Did you, did you stick up for yourself? Actually, I tried to, but most uh, one DSD just walked away. The other one didn't return my calls. I went to Human Resources on the first one to talk to them about this, and um, they said whatever they want is what we have to stick by. Basically, they they just turned me away. Thank you. No more questions. Your king. No questions, Your Honor. Any further questions from Council? Yes. Um, approximately when did your in attorney instruct you to stop applying for LVN jobs? Oh, approximately two months ago. And at that time you did know your um, probation terms said that you had to work for six consecutive months. Yes, I want to know that. So Ms. Lopez, I do need you to allow Ms. Bergmeier to finish her full question before you answer so we can have a clear transcript, okay? Yes. Thank you. And um, in response to one of the members' questions, um, you mentioned um, drugs or alcohol. So prior, your prior um, crimes, at that time were you using drugs and alcohol? No, I wasn't, but my husband was. Do you consider yourself to have a drug or alcohol abuse problem? No, I do not. No further questions. Sir? And no questions, Your Honor. Are there any additional questions from the board members? Seeing any? Uh, Mr. Herr, do you have any additional witnesses you would like to call? No, Your Honor. Bergmeier, anything further? Um, we can um, submit it, nothing further. Okay. Then at this time, um, the case is considered uh, submitted and the record will be closed. We can go off the record. I do have just one question um, or one comment. Uh, just a Let's go back on the record. Sorry. Um, just as in the previous case, there are uh, confidential information on this, so I don't know how these, you want to... These aren't redacted? No, I didn't. Uh, they did not get redacted in time. I'm sorry. So can you... Um, I mean, I'm not going to have time to flip through three of them as we sit here, do you know where, uh, is that a social on? It's the social and then on the application itself has the, on exhibit A, the first page has her social in the upper left, and then on the, uh, exhibit B has her date of birth and social as part of the application that she submitted. Honor, could we ask the lawyer to take these extra copies back for control's sake? And Definitely. If you could collect those once we go off the record, that would be great, and I'll keep the official ones. Um, are there any, is there any information that you're aware of which needs to be redacted from Exhibit C? No, I'm not aware of any information there. Okay. And then I note on Exhibit B, you said it was on the first three pages. And on Exhibit A, is it just the first page? Yes. Which is the transcript? It is? That is correct. I'm okay. Sorry. Yes. Your Honor, I saw a social security number in this packet. Which, which one are you looking at? What's the, is it the transcript? Uh, the probably in the second packet. The application? Correct. It's on the middle of the application. So I've noted that the social and birth date are listed on page one, two, and three. Did you 
notice it at another location? That, that was the one. That was it. Okay. Okay, and also page four. Um, and I will represent for the record that I will look through each page of the um, exhibits that are part of the official record, and if I note that there's a social security number or a birth date, I will redact it. Thank you. Is there anything further before I say this case is submitted? The matter is submitted, and we can go off the record. So, Mr. Thank you. Clark, if you could please collect the, the additional copies from the board members, I'd appreciate that. We're going to take a 10 minute comfort break, so we will come back on the record at 1030. Thank you. I think we're ready to begin, and Mr. Avalos, your petition will be heard next. <coughs> Let's go ahead and go on the record. Good morning, everyone. We are now on the record. We are before the Board of Vocational Nursing and Psychiatric Technicians. Today's date is November 3rd, 2016. It is approximately 10.30 in the morning, and we are at the Department of Consumer Affairs building located in Sacramento, California. Our next matter uh, is the petition for reinstatement by Luis Alfonso Avalos. Am I pronouncing that correctly, sir? That's correct. Thank yes. you. This is OAH case number 2016-090888. My name is Tiffany King. I am an administrative law judge with the Office of Administrative Hearings, and I have been assigned to preside over this matter this morning. The board members previously identified themselves for the record, and I will note that a quorum of the board is present. May I take the appearance of the Deputy Attorney General, please? Leslie Bergmeier, appearing on behalf of the people, pursuant to Government Code Section 11522. And I will note Mr. Avalos is present, and you're representing yourself today, sir? Yes, I am. And were you previously advised that you could have retained counsel at your own expense? Yes, I did. And having been so advised, you chose to represent yourself. Is that correct? Yes, I did. Okay. So, Mr. Avalos, before this hearing and uh, when we were off the record this morning, I explained the procedures of what's going to happen today and what your rights are. Is that correct? That's correct. Do you have any questions before we get started? No, I don't. Okay, thank you. Ms. Bergermeyer? Thank you. Um, I, I would like to have marked for identification and offer into evidence Exhibit 1, the original petition packet with accompanying documents. May I approach? Yes, please. Exhibit 1 consists of five sections. Section A is the petition for reinstatement and supporting documents. Section B is the license certification. 
Section C is the notice of hearing and related correspondence. Section D is the board's 2014 decision and order. Section E is the 2010 board decision and order. At this time, I offer the packet into evidence as Exhibit 1. Is there any objection, Mr. Avalos? No, there isn't. Exhibit 1 is admitted. Thank you. Um, the summary of the case, including license histories, will follow. The board issued vocational nurse license number 27381 to the petitioner on December 22nd, 2003. Then an accusation was filed against him in August of 2009. The grounds for the accusation were two felony convictions on 20, uh, on, in February of 2009 involving driving under the influence of alcohol with a blood alcohol concentration of 0.08% or more. And one of the convictions actually involved uh, the admission of four prior DUIs in 2008, 2005, where, where there were two different cases and in two different counties, and 1998. And for all of them, his um, blood alcohol concentration was at least 0.08% or above. There's a 0.13% and a 0.20%. Um, he was sentenced to one year jail plus three years probation ending in approximately 2012. There were related causes for discipline in the accusation including dangerous use of alcohol um, to, to self or others and convictions involving consumption of alcohol. There was also an aggravation, a 1992 conviction for DUI with a blood alcohol concentration of 0.08 or higher. In December of 2009, that license expired while the accusation was pending. Eventually, in May of 2010, the board um, adopted a stipulated surrender of license in order. There was cost recovery in the amount of $3,698.75, no payments to date. Effective March 14, 2016, the board denied a petition for reconsideration of, the, of a decision denying his petition for reinstatement. So this today is his second petition for reinstatement. Part of the board's decision and order included the statement with 30 years of admitted alcohol abuse and relatively recent completion of formal criminal probation, which occurred in 2012, the board required a longer period of verified abstinence from alcohol. The petition for reinstatement for today's hearing was submitted and received in August of this year. And um, he appears truthful in the reason for the revocation. He had DUIs, several DUIs in 10 years. Um, but not truthful in the statement that uh, he said he had never applied for reinstatement of license before. This is the second according to the historical documents. He's currently employed as a certified nurse assistant at Legacy Post-Acute Rehab Center. He submitted ca uh, character reference letters from his AA sponsor, Friends, completion uh, certificate for a rehab program and letters from college instructors. He expresses his remorse and he can further tell the board members about um, his rehab in his presentation. At the appropriate time, I'm prepared to proceed with questions. Thank you. Mr. Avalos, if I could please have you raise your right hand. <clears throat> Do you solemnly state under penalty of perjury that the evidence you will give in this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you very much. And whenever you'd like to begin with your statement, sir. Well, I'm here before before the boards just to get my license back. I understand that I was here the first time and I was denied. I understand the consequences. I understand that I'm here for the second time because I was denied for more rehabilitation. As you see, I've been sober over seven years and 10 months as of today. And my record shows. I also even bought myself a brand new car and I'm working as a CNA, so I'm, I'm driving right but, now. Mr. Avalos, if I could ask you to slow down a little bit, we're ha I don't know if other board members, but I'm having a hard time understanding you. I'm kind of. I, I understand okay. that you're nervous, and it's. I don't think anybody is surprised by that, but if you could just okay. take sorry. a breath. Okay. And, um, I have a stomach virus too, so I'm trying to deal with that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. How's this? Okay. 
I suggest you put the microphone right in front of your mouth, okay. and then you can just speak regularly. Okay. Great. As I was saying, um, I've been sober for um, seven years and ten months as of today, and I've done a lot through the past since I've you know dealt with my consequences as a I am an alcoholic, recovering alcoholic, and as I when I lost my LVN license, I do. Um, I do value that because I'm a CNA right now, and I know it's, it's a very hard job doing CNA work. But at the same time, it just it takes me to reality where I cannot make another mistake like this in my life. And I've gone back to college, Cal State San Bernardino, to get my business degree. And I've done a lot of charity work for my church, Catholic church, and gone to AAs. I've done everything possible to, to make myself a better civilian and not commit any errors, you know, dealing with the laws. And my family also supports me at this time. And I'm just asking for another chance for you guys to see this as my one chance here showing you that I'm able to perform my duties as an LVN and I will make sure of it to keep it and pursue my education as an RN or even nurse practitioner or whatever. So to just to live my dream and I'm 45 years old right now, and I understand that it's time to grow up and be responsible for my actions. And I understand what you guys are doing here. It takes a lot of hard work to judgment upon a person up here. And I, I just want to thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Avalos. Ms. Burgermeyer? Um, Mr. Avalos, as you sit here today, um, do you have any pending arrests in California or any other state? No, I don't. As you sit here today, have you had any criminal convictions since 2009 in this state or any other state? No, I don't. Then, in looking at your um, documents that you signed you know, under your own signature and um, reference letters from a Mark Z and a Carlos M., I noticed that they use correlating, as you do. Did you prepare their letters, or did they prepare uh, them? They asked me to help them write it, because some of them don't know how to write. That hey, you, sir, you need to speak directly? Oh, they asked me to help them write the paper, to give them insight what to write, more or less, because they don't know. They don't understand nothing dealing with the nursing field. So they asked me for advice, and I gave it to them. I'm not going to lie about that. OK. Um, there was a gap in your employment from 2009 to July 5, 2016. Tell us why there was a gap. Oh, because I went back to school. I went to junior college, uh, Victor Valley College, and I wasn't working for three years. And then I got accepted to Cal State San Bernardino. And I started working home health part-time here and there, odd jobs. But I was not working at all. I just recently got this job at Legacy, and I ended up quitting that job. And now I'm working at another place called Palm, Highland Palms. I've been there for four months. But, Mr. Robles, I do need to ask you again to please speak a little bit slower and oh, directly into okay. the, the I'm microphone. Sorry. Okay. And what was the name of your new place of employment? Highland Palms in San Bernardino. And is that a nursing home? Yes, it is. Are you um, working as a certified nurse assistant there? Yes, I am. You mentioned you've been there two months? Four months. I started August the 5th as of today. Why did you leave your other employment? Um, it just wasn't for me. It was very um, intricate work. I wasn't able to handle it physically. And when you say physically, um, do you mean a bad back or you um, mean um, other physical ailments? Just a, just a lot of uh, a lot of heavy lifting and being overworked. You said in your application that you are seeing a psychiatrist or you have seen a psychiatrist for anxiety and depression. Do you still suffer from anxiety and depression? Um, actually, right now, um, no, not anxiety, just depression because of the things I've been going through throughout my life. And I am under medication. Is that Zoloft? Yes, it is. What is the um, dosage of Zoloft? It's 200 milligrams per day. And that's by a prescription? Yes, it is. All right, did you say 200 milligrams per day? Per day, yeah, twice a day. And so does that mean 200 milligrams, like one pill of 200, two different times a day? Or yeah, it's, it's okay. BID, 100 milligrams BID. What was that? 100 milligrams BID. Okay. All right, thank you. 
How long have you been suffering from depression? Well, ever since this happened to me, I lost everything. And so my family saw that I wasn't feeling well, um, not acting the way I usually act, you know, positive, optimistic with life. And so they recommended me to see a psychiatrist, and I agreed upon it. And ever since then, I, every day I, I love life, you know, and I'm optimistic. Um, so you said ever since this happened to you, is that since 2009? Yes. Okay. Um, do you find that taking the Zoloft and suffering from depression has any impact on your ability to do your current work as a certified nurse assistant? No, I don't. Um, now, you've been sober for over seven years. Um, do you know what your triggers are to go back to alcohol? No, I don't. My triggers were just being irresponsible, and I am a recovering alcoholic. I will be till, the, till I die, and I understand that I have to do my, my mechanisms, coping mechanisms. I have to do my coping mechanisms by attending AAs. Um, just being a, not being around alcohol, I cannot be around alcohol. Um, so that's the kind of lifestyle I live, and this is what it's going to take. I will do it, just to stay sober. And I believe you mentioned in your statement that your support system is your family? Yes. Who else? I have a lot of friends, and I have a lot of professors that I go to school with right now. And do they know that your license had been revoked? Yes, they, they know all about my life. Okay. You stated in your um, petition that you have plans to obtain your RN degree, but what I'm wondering is what are your plans if your LVN license is reinstated? Well, if I get my LVN license back, I will definitely start working as an LVN. And probably until I'm ready, I'll go back to school and achieve my RN. And like I said, right now I'm doing my business degree also, so I'm in the middle of boarding care or whatever. Whatever comes first, I'll, I will do it. But I will continue my education in the nursing field, in the health, the health care. Okay. Uh, do you have any prospects for a um, vocational nurse job if your license is reinstated? Yes. Right now where I'm working at Highland Palms, she even, she even gave me permission to come here. She said, get your LVM back. We need a lot of good nurses. And I, I showed them my, what, I'm, what I'm made of, what kind of person I am, very dependable, hard worker, and honest. Um, do you know if they would be willing to employ you if you're on a probationary status with the board? Yes, she knows. I gave her all the paper about the uh, petition papers, and so she knows all the facts about it. How can the board be assured that you will not engage in further acts of abusing alcohol that caused you, you to lose your license? Well, I mean, for me to continue doing what I'm doing right now, that should be more assuring. But like I said, I take it day by day. I cannot predict what's going to happen tomorrow. But as long as I have my coping mechanisms, and doing strong, I will, I shall stay sober. And how often do you attend AA meetings currently? I go, there's, there's some attending, I attend at school sometimes on Wednesdays and I go during like a Saturday nights where they have like pool parties and all that. It's just like hanging out like you're at a club or something but without alcohol, which is very fun for me, you know, something like going out, you know, without alcohol. So that's, that's where I get my fun. <laughs> Yeah. Um, how long have you had the AA sponsor that um, provided a letter for you? Um, it's been a while. It's been over, actually, it's been over two years because my, my past one just passed away recently. Years, like pretty much, not, not two years exactly, a year and a half probably. What step are you on in AA? I, I go through all the steps. I go through all the steps always. You well, never finish your steps. It's... You always continue your steps, no matter what. But what step are you on today? Right now, I can say I'm step one. Um, no further questions at this time. I'm going to open it up for questions from the board, beginning with Mr. Ma. Mr. Lopez, can you tell us when the last time you were near alcohol, physically near it? 
Mm, I really could tell you. I don't even remember. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then when with with the absence of alcohol being in your presence, how often would you say you crave it? Um, I don't crave it anymore. That's why I try to stay away as much as possible. So, yeah. Commendable. Very commendable. Uh, can you tell us what you thought or felt about the board's decision to deny your petition in 2014? No, I, I'm fully acquiescent towards that um, decision because I understand you guys are looking after the safety of the residents. And, you know, so I truly understand. And how are you different at all, if at all, from the time you presented to us in 2014 than when you're here today? I would say I'm the same because I haven't changed. I'm still going, going forward. Thank you. I have no other questions. David Bronstein. I just want to touch on one thing, and I may circle back around later. Um, your CNA license is current, but due to expire coming up, I saw. Have you already renewed it? Actually, I sent in the paperwork, and they're giving me two more years to go do the program again to reactivate it. So they gave me that paper. Uh, it won't expire until 2018, but I have to go assign it with the Red Cross and do all the paperwork. Gotcha. Too. Yeah. So okay, and then your current employment um, with Highland Palm sounds promising for the future. If you were to get your um, LVN license, but it sounds like they are very pleased with you right now in your current status and your security in that job has allowed you with your proper budgeting to afford a new car, it sounded like? Well, I mean, not, well, I would say it's a 2005, not me, but I haven't had a car in a while, so for me it's a new car. So but I it totally know. fits within your current budget. Yes, yes. Great. I have yeah. no other questions. Okay, no problem. Dr. Basti Martinez? No questions. Sendozo? No questions at this time. Yes. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Um, I think I remember you when you were here last time. Yeah, I remember you too. <laughs> wasn't your father with you at Yeah, that time? he was with me, yeah. So, could you tell me your sobriety date? Since 2009, 26, January 26, January 26. as of today, yes. So, how I'm trying to understand some of your petition. Um, I see your sobriety date is 2009, but it looks like you went to rehab in 2015. You went back to rehab. Yes, did I did. Did you have a relapse? No, no, I just did that for myself. I did that for myself to show you guys that I'm doing something about my rehab. I, matter of fact, I can go next month and go do another rehab if I want to. I mean, I'm going to continue doing the rehabs whenever I want to, just to stay strong, you know. Yeah. And I appreciate that you have gone back to work because I remember that we asked you a lot of questions about why you weren't yeah, working. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But I noticed you said that you uh, left Legacy. Yes. And a couple reasons were the heavy lifting and a heavy workload. Yes. Do you think you could handle working as an LVN because you will still have some of those same issues to deal with, lifting, heavy workload, um, high acuity, things like that. Well, I mean, pretty much LVN, they don't really much do that. They more or less, you know, pass meds and, you know, call the doctors. But I'm pretty strong. I mean, I do an eight-hour shift. I'm doing a lot of lifting because all the females, they look at me as a male. Yeah, I need your help. So, I'm sorry. Everybody, oh, sorry. Everybody kind of asks me for help. So, I'm like, I can never say no. So, with an eight-hour eight period of time, I'm lifting a lot of residents. So that's so, more or less what I meant. Yeah. You feel you are physically capable of fulfilling the duties as an LV, or your oh, duties yeah. as an LVN. Definitely yes. And then you still owe the board three thousand six hundred ninety-eight dollars and seventy-five cents. If the board were to uh, grant your reinstatement, do you have a plan for how you would be able to pay that back? Yes, I would start making payments, uh, pay it off as much as possible, or arrange payments, whatever I have to do to pay it back. Thank you. No problem. Marina? No questions, Your Honor. Mr. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Alvarez. Uh, Mr. Alvarez, thank you. Um, just, uh, it was reported by the ADA that you stated that you have not previously applied for reinstatement which was an error 
that you did apply, and according to the records, 26 August 13 and 5 March 14. Um, they applied for reinstatement. Is that correct? Uh, for the nursing license? Reinstatement of your nursing license. Yeah. I didn't know I was getting my license revoked because I was in jail in 2009. Not until I spoke to the district attorney and she told me that my license was under being um, revoked. So I surrendered my license in 2010. Now, the question was, you applied for reinstatement in August 2013 and in March 2014. Where are that? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, yes. Okay, I understand. Yeah, I was just wondering why I got I got denied. I mean, I thought I was doing everything I was supposed to do. So I figured, why not try? You know? Okay, but you stated that you had not uh, applied previously, according to our ADA, that on this current application, that you had not applied for reinstatement. On the question, I'm so sorry. Oh, when you guys denied me, you guys sent me a package. Tell me if I want to pre petition for that. Is that is that what you're asking me? No, I'm just asking you. Have you applied for reinstatement of your license to get it back previously? Oh, this is the second time. Second time. Yeah. Correct. What I'm just saying those in your application, you state that it was not. This is your first time on the application. Uh, maybe I maybe I messed up because of the the first time I got denied. Maybe I misunderstood the question. Uh, again, on your history, you had two felony DUIs, but you had a history of four previous DUIs, correct? Right, one felony, sir. It was only one felony. I got sponge to a misdemeanor. But you did, okay, one felony DUI, and you had previous history of additional DUIs that were not reported. Is that correct? Yeah, I had four DUIs within 10 years, so they consider that a felony. So. Okay, I understand now. Um, the question I'm, I'm getting at is that you didn't report these when you did your application. One of the hallmarks of nursing as a profession is integrity. When you sign your name on the nurse's note, when you sign your name on the drug administration record, you have to be accurate about all your entries. Is that correct? That's correct. So, by extension, why isn't your paperwork accurate as it should be? Maybe because I thought that once ten years comes along, they come off your record, so I don't have to. I don't have to give you that information. That's probably what I thought at the point when I signed it and I wrote the documentation. Do you, so you thought that you were doing it correctly when you signed the paper? Yeah, when I when I did the paperwork, I thought I was doing the right thing. Meaning, not trying to lie or nothing. It's just saying once it's off your record, it's not on your record anymore. Okay, because so yeah. well, one of the things that we have to make sure is, is that you're a safe practitioner. And when you administer medications and when you do treatments or procedures, you're documenting all of this information. And it has to be accurate. But if you can't even get your own application to us accurately, how is that going to reflect if we decide to um, that you're safe enough to be a nurse again? I understand your point, sir. I will be more prompt, more uh, on point, and make sure that doesn't happen again. Well, let me ask you, if you got your own application, what would you think if you had something with this much information either missing or inaccurate? Well, like I said, I, I misunderstood the question, or I didn't think it was relevant to that point because I thought you just wanted what was on for that conviction. So I wasn't trying to hide nothing because I know you guys do life scans, so I know everything comes up. But within those 10 years when I got convicted, that's what I put down. So that's all what I thought was relevant to the case or to the documentation. Okay. Also in the record, because it's been more than four years, um, you would be mandated to take the NCLEX exam over again. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Um, what do you think about that? I'll take it any day. I have no problem with that. Okay. Um, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. Martin? No questions. Your King? Yes, just briefly, um, Mr. Avalos, uh, thank you uh, for being here. Uh, you indicated you had the uh, rehab program in uh, January uh, of 2015, is that right? Yes, sir. And was that a six-month program? Yes, it was an inpatient-outpatient program. 
Okay, and as far as cost recovery, do you have the ability to uh, pay that amount? Cost recovery from that program? No, 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 there was a cost oh, recovery you're talking about associated the money? with the... Yes, the, I, I will. I'm working right now so I can make payments. I can, I can, whatever I have to do, I, I will do it. All right, thank you. Nothing further, Your Honor. <clears throat> any additional questions from the board? And Ms. Bergermeyer, do you have any additional questions? No, I do not. Mr. Avalos, do you have any other witnesses that you intend to call on your behalf? No, I don't. Do you have any additional documentation that you would like to submit to the board at this time? No, I don't. Okay, if there's nothing further then, then this um, case is deemed submitted and the record is closed. We can go off the record. Okay, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right, good morning. We're on the record. We're before the Board of Vocational Nursing and Psychiatric Technicians. It is November 3rd, 2016. Is it, it is approximately 11.06 in the morning. We're located at the Office of the Department of Consumer Affairs in Sacramento, California. This is the petition for reinstatement for Denise Hawley, OAH case number 20160908889. My name is Joy, J-O-Y, Redmond, R-E-D-M-O-N. I'm an administrative law judge with the Office of Administrative Hearings. All of the board members who were here previously are still present and we continue to have a quorum. May I have, Ms. Bergemeyer, can you please state um, your name for the record and give your association to the case? Leslie Bergemeyer, Deputy Attorney General, appearing on behalf of the people of the state of California, pursuant to Government Code Section 11522. Oh, thank you very much. I apologize. I had misstated on the record. We actually have one board member who has stepped out for a moment, um, but we still maintain a quorum. Okay, we're going to go ahead then and continue. Ms. Bergmeyer, did you finish your... Uh, I, I did. Would you like me to repeat it? But I did. Did you get the whole statement? Okay, then you don't need to All repeat right. it. Thank, thank you very you. much. Okay, and um, can you go ahead, Ms. Holly, and state and spell your name for the record as well? Um, my name is Denise Holly, and it's 
D-E-N-I-S-E-H-O-L-L-E-Y. And you understand, Ms. Holly, that you had the right to be represented by counsel today. Is that correct? Yes. And you made the decision to proceed on your own behalf? Yes. Okay. Um, also, before we began this morning, um, we went over some of the um, different rights that you had with respect to how the matter was going to proceed, the right to present witnesses, um, to ask any questions of any witnesses. And do you need to have any of that repeated? No. Okay. All right, thank you. And I will just note for the record then that we have all of the board members back again. Thank you. All right, so Ms. Bermeyer, would you like to proceed? Yes. I'd like to have marked for identification and offer into evidence as Exhibit 1, the original packet uh, for this petition hearing with accompanying documents. The board members and petitioner have previously been provided with copies of the same. May I approach? And you asked not just for it to be marked, but admitted at this time. Is that correct? Um, excuse me? You asked for it to be not just marked, but admitted as well? Yes. Okay. Any objection, Ms. Holly? No. Okay. It is admitted. Um, I'd briefly like to describe what's included in the Exhibit 1. There are six, um, seven sections. Exhibit or Section A is the petition for reinstatement submitted by Ms. Holly and supporting documents. Section B is the license certification. Section C is the notice of hearing and related correspondence. Section D is the 2015 um, Arizona Board decision. It's a consent for entry of voluntary surrender of petitioner's Arizona licensed practical nurse license based on a uh, conviction, which I will briefly discuss below, and, and this board's revocation of her vocational nurse license and underlying accusation. Section E is the 2014 order sustaining demur to petition for writ of administrative mandate and dismissal of the petition that Ms. Holly had um, filed with the Superior Court. Section F is her petition to, uh, for writ of mandate. Section G is the 2012 board default decision and order underlying the accus accusation which is attached. And now for a summary of the case and license history. In October 2004, the board issued vocational nurse license number 211607 to Ms. Holly. Then in July 2007, a citation was issued which was paid in full the following month. April 2012, an accusation was filed and served against Ms. Holly. The underlying circumstances and grounds were a 2009 conviction of the crime in San Luis Obispo County on her plea of no contest to violating Penal Code Section 32, accessory after the fact to um, Penal Code Section 4573.6. I have a slight typo. I'm not sure if I have that correct. And that's pos uh, possession of a controlled substance, which was marijuana, in a prison. A felony. There was the underlying plan for Miss Holly to take marijuana to her husband who was then incarcerated in a state prison. The prison officials had been tipped off to the plan. They searched the petitioner's vehicle after her consent and, um, part, and it was parked on prison grounds and they found marijuana in the trunk. She was also um, charged in the accusation with possession of a controlled substance. substance. And according to the papers in the packet, the um, conviction was reduced from a felony to a misdemeanor and, and eventually expunged um, in completely. And there's a copy of the expungement in the petition. In 2012, there was a default decision in order uh, uh, adopted by the board. The license was revoked. Ms. Holly had not um, submitted a notice of defense to the um, accusation. That became effective in December of 2012. In 2014, the petitioner filed the petition for administrative mandamus previously mentioned. She wanted to modify the Vocational Nursing Act's three-year waiting period, which is statutory, for petitioning for reinstatement of her license so that there would only be a one-year waiting period. That was um, denied and it was dismissed. 
the court ruled that the vocational nursing board and the acts three-year waiting period superseded the general rule of one year. Then this petition for today's hearing was filed in May of 2016. Briefly, uh, comments about the petition. Um, Ms. Holly does state that she's seeking reinstatement because she's a caregiver at heart. She loves helping people, especially the elderly, and she loves the nursing profession. She takes responsibility for her criminal conduct and is remorseful for any negative image cast upon the nursing profession based upon her prior conduct. She submitted a letter describing the underlying events of what happened at the prison that day that I previously mentioned and relating to the Arizona boards accepting her voluntary surrender. There's, um, it, there's employment from 2010 to current. There's a two-year break from August 2012 to August 2014 included in that um, employment period. She currently works for H&R Block. She has a home-based business since December 2014. It looks like it's um, like legal, um, paralegal type services. She's provided additional licenses and certificates, which she can tell us about. Um, there's a two, uh, 2014 Department of Social Services proposed decision. She had been excluded from, for, uh, for, from working at a Department of Social Services licensed facility. But under this decision of 2014, um, she's still excluded, but there's um, a, like a stay and um, she was able, she's able to work at a licensed facility under them. And um, there was not a page saying it was adopted, but if it was adopted, that um, three-year period would end in February of 2017. There's more education. There's no um, mention of any rehabilitation or therapy in her, um, any of her submittals for today. She's currently under a doctor's care for high blood pressure, allergies, and anemia, and on prescription medications. I'm prepared to ask questions at the appropriate time. Hi, Ms. Holly, I'd like to swear you in. Will you please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm under penalty of perjury that the, that the testimony you give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Okay. At this time, if you'd like to make a statement, you may go ahead and do so. Um, since my... Um, conviction. I have steadfast in education. Um, my two year, it was maybe a year um, break in, unempl in unemployment was due to the fact that I had to re uh, introduce myself to another profession because I was not able to work as a nurse anymore. So I took the H&R um, block course and um, gained employment in that. And I also did a um, uh, business certification course to um, acquisition myself to um, computer programs because although I worked with computers, it was nursing programs. So far as like doing Word documents and that type of thing, I was lacking in that area so I, I did a course to gain knowledge in that to seek the employment with H&R Block which I'm currently still working with H&R Block um, since uh, the conviction I just I'm pursuing my H&R Block program right now because that's what I, I do and I'm um, taking a course to Gained my enrolled agent status um, with the IRS. Very remorseful for what I did. I take full responsibility for my actions. No matter what was asked of me, it was my final decision to engage in the activity. And I I take full responsibility. I'm very embarrassed. I'm done. Finished? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Need a break or are you okay? No, I'm fine. 
Bergmeier, do you have questions? Um, I do. As you sit here today, do you have any outstanding or pending arrests in this state or any um, other state? No. As you sit here today, are there any criminal charges pending against you in this state or any other state? No. At the time that um, you had the plan to take the marijuana into the prison, were you actually a marijuana user? No. Uh, so tell us just minimally about um, why you agreed to that plan. Um, for choices on my behalf. Um, you no, know, uh, my ex-husband was a marijuana user and he asked me to bring him some and making poor decisions at that time. I, I was going to, and that's what led to my conviction. The day in question, I did not have marijuana on me. It was in my car as it was stated in the, the facts there. Um, but like I said, I still take full responsibility for my actions because no matter what someone else asked of me, I'm an adult and I made that conscious decision to go ahead with it. And so I don't blame anyone but myself. So. Um, was that the first time then that you had taken the marijuana to the prison? No, I had did it a couple times before. And you say you're divorced from that particular uh, person? Yes. Um, as far as the default decision and order against you, um, I think I previously mentioned that, um, you did not change your address with the board. Are you aware that it's your responsibility to always keep the board updated on your um, current address? Yes. And, and I... I I, I didn't, life was running fast and I hadn't even realized that when I moved that I hadn't changed the address so it was my own negligence so and, and, and by not changing the address when the uh, petition was sent out I wasn't aware of it and whenever I became aware of it it was already the ball was already rolling with um, my license being revoked because I didn't respond to the petition. Um, if your license is reinstated, what are your plans? My plans? Um, my plan is to seek employment as a nurse and to continue my education to become an RN. Um, my ultimate goal is to open up an adult residential facility to care for developmentally delayed adults. <clears throat> and you provided certificates, you completed programs for um, that part of your plan, is that right? Yes. To be an administrator? Yes. Um, do you have any plans to reinstate your Arizona license? Yes. And tell us about that. Um, I don't, I don't and I can't remember what actual month it was, but I thought about my license in Arizona. And so I called them and um, made them aware that I had the conviction. Um, they had me send paperwork over to them. So I self-reported the conviction over there. And instead of taking Arizona through this long out, drug out um, process, I agreed to surrender my license because um, um, I wasn't going to cost the state any money for something that I already, I've been convicted, I'm, I was off probation, everything was already completed. So the, the better choice for me was to just surrender my license after I um, self-reported the conviction. Do you plan on getting your Arizona license reinstated? Yes. 
And then um, if you get it reinstated, are you moving to Arizona to um, work under that license or are you staying here to work under California? Or um, I will be staying here. Sorry. I will be staying here in California, but I will um, um, reinstate my license there. Um, up until all this happened, I maintained my license in Arizona as well as here. So I would pay for my license renewal there every four, it's every four years over there. So I would renew my license every four years there and every two years here. You stated that you take medication for your high blood pressure. What medication is that? I take Norvasc. N-O-R-V-A-S-C. And um, is, is there any impact with your taking Norvac back um, on your ability to practice vocational night, um, nursing duties? No. How long have you taken the high blood pressure med? Um, for about three or four years now. All right. Um, thank you. The default decision and order against you required you to pay $170 in cost recovery. Will you be able to pay that cost recovery? Yes, I wasn't aware of that, or I would have paid that a long time ago. Um, in, um, have you ever had any problems with drugs? No. When you work in... Um, as a licensed vocational nurse, one of the duties is uh, passing drugs. How can the board be assured that you will not access those drugs for yourself or others? Um, I can reassure the board of that because I'm not a drug user. I've never used drugs. Um, and uh, that, I mean, that's just the bottom line. I don't use drugs, so, and I. I wouldn't take someone else's medication to uh, give to someone else. That's just not what I would do. Um, I, I, I have grown as a person and my integrity won't allow me to engage in any criminal activity or anything that's dishonest. So that is my assurance to the board that I would not engage in activity as such. And then one last question. What assurances can you give the board that your past conduct is behind you? Um, like I just stated uh, a few minutes ago, um, my integrity. Um, this has been a very embarrassing situation for myself. And I would not put myself through that again for anybody. Thank you. No further questions at this time. The board members have questions. We can start to my far right, uh, Mr. Ma. Yes, one second, sorry. Um, Ms. Hall, you mentioned your future plans, your long-term plans. Uh, but is, is it your intention to practice, if we granted you probation, uh, in California or Arizona in the next few years? In California. Do you feel that you have any issues or addictions to drugs, alcohol, or any other substance? No, I don't drink. I don't smoke cigarettes. I don't do drugs. I've never done any of the above. If someone close to you, a friend or family member, asks you to do something illegal, what would you do? I would, <laughs> I would immediately turn them down and they would not be my friend and I would disassociate myself if they were my family for asking me. Okay, thank you. I have no other questions. I have no questions. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. You've mentioned that you would use your license, if reinstated, to do the work of an LVN. Yes. It's been a while 
since you were even engaged in that kind of environment. Can you tell the board what you would do to ensure that you have all of the necessary skills updated if you were to have your license reinstated? I would take a refresher course. Anything else? Um, and the, well, the refresher course would in, entitle, entangle um, the education part as far as and skills as well and um, go from, take training, um, let my employer know that it's been a while since I've um, practiced as a nurse and seek education that they offer as well. And do you have a plan or even at this time a possibility for employment as an LVN? Um, no, I do, I do not at this time because I, I don't have an active license so no one would even entertain my um, Speaking of employment in that situation, um, I did have um, a, a prospective employer that um, wanted to hire me as an LVN once I got my reinstatement, but that was a year ago. And so um, I would definitely try back with them because they were willing to give me a chance. Thank you. Uh -huh. <clears throat> no questions. Good morning. So because this was a default, you never had a hearing and we never really heard your side of the story. So I have a couple questions to ask you about the incident that occurred. Okay. When the incident occurred, you were, were you also working as an LVN in the prison? Previously, I was. At the time, I was not. Uh, it was a couple years before that. That's where I met him at. Okay, so when you were working as an LBN, that's when you met your husband at the men's prison? Yes. Right? Well, it was a different prison, but still a prison, yes. Um, and then you stopped working at the prison? Yes, I, I went back to working as a LBN in a, a nursing facility. And Ms. Bergmeier mentioned it a little bit earlier, but could you tell me in your own words um, why you want your nursing license back, why you want to be a nurse again? Um, I, I love taking care of people, especially the elderly, um, and it's, it's always been a, a, a passion of mine to be a nurse, and um, being a nurse, I was a very good nurse. Um, I um, I think that me not being in the nursing field has um, crippled the nursing field because I took great pride in being a nurse. And I do appreciate what you said earlier. Um, you said it was my final decision to engage, engage in the activity, so I do appreciate the responsibility that you're taking. Um, Mr. Vertia? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Holly, just to get clarification, you stated that if you get your license, um, you want to continue your education. Um, you stated earlier that you want to become an enrolled agent before the IRS, and you also want to be an RN. So I'm kind of curious which way were you leaning towards if you get your license back? Well, right now I'm doing the enrolled agent course, and uh, my plan is to have that completed by December 31st. So that will be completed long before the RN program would be completed. So this is just my course of action right now because as a tax professional, I'm furthering my education because that's what I'm doing at this present time. Um, I've went from 
a tax associate to a tax specialist three as of today and I'm taking the enrolled agent course to gain that status to practice in front of the IRS. Thank so. you. Thank you. Um, something that came up that you stated that wasn't in your your full reason why my license was revoked letter and I'd just like to explore that a little bit. You stated a few minutes ago that this was not the first time you brought marijuana to your, hu your ex-husband in prison. Is that correct? Well, it, it was a, 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 an accumulation of events. So the couple of times that I had done it before led up to the day that I was um, arrested, even though I didn't happen. And that was their tip off, as she stated in her. Um, so it wasn't that it was done years ago. It was just a few weeks it was the accumulation of the event itself. So that's why it's not in, a, in the full, it was just the, the um, events that led up to the conviction. So it was all entangled in that. So that's, that's why just I didn't. The question I have to ask, is years later you're expressing remorse and gratified, gratified to hear that but the question is if you knew it was wrong back then why did you do it poor choices bottom line poor choices um like i stated before um with someone else asking me to do something that's wrong, the bottom decision was mine, and it was a poor choice of mine. And um, <laughs> this has been, like I stated before, very embarrassing. So as far as engaging in something like that again, no one could ever persuade me to get myself into what I've had to deal with the consequences of the after effects of my actions. Miss Holly, I'm, I'm besides Mr. Bronstein, I'm probably the oldest serving <clears throat> member of this board seated here. Mr. Bronstein and I were me at the same time. I have a reputation of going after people and asking about their integrity. I think this will be the first time I said I am very impressed with your integrity. The ability to to self-report to another state nursing board, come up here and to frankly admit everything, um, is both amazing and gratifying. That people who have stumbled, picked themselves up, and are continuing to walk down the journey of life. I wish you well. I wish that whatever the results are of this, that you continue, and continue to hold your head up high. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> I want to get some clarification on a couple of things. Um, <clears throat> were you working at the prison at the time that you met your husband? At the time that I met him, yes. So he was an inmate at the prison where you worked? Yes. Okay. And when you entered into a relationship, relationship with him, you quit the prison? You quit working there? Yes, I quit. Uh, well... Yes, I quit. Um, it was um, probably a couple years after I wasn't working there that all this happened. Um, I think I'm more interested in the fact that you were employed at the prison and yet you were carrying on a relationship with an inmate. Well, what, well once I became um, in a relationship with him, I quit. That's when I stopped working there because... I know that I can't work there and be engaged in a relationship with them. So I stopped working there and I went back to traditional nursing. <clears throat> so did you did you stop working there right away or was it Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. When I made the 
that choice of engaging a relationship with him, I stopped working there. What's your thought today about nurses having relationships with patients or inmates? I would not advise that at all. It's a poor choice. And um, I would, um, if I knew of someone that was thinking of having a relationship with a, a, a patient or of any sort, I would, Really, I would tell them my story and let them know that's not a good choice. That the, what you do today will affect you. What is this? Since 2009, this is 2016. And it's still affecting me. So I would really advise them to not engage like that. Because... Their choices will follow them. Thank you. <clears throat> um, I just have a question of counsel. I just need a little enlightenment on this because I'm not clear on the status of the action, the administrative action by the Department of Social Services relative to the <clears throat> residential facility uh, administrator license. Is there a stay on that? What section number is it, if you know? It's an A. It's an A. <clears throat> and the proposed decision is on the back page, A28. <clears throat> and the order is on A32. In the document I'm looking at, it's marked as Exhibit C-14 through 18. The way I read it when I was preparing was that there was an exemption. It's like what um, this um, board does when they um, give a, uh, they put some, like a license, uh, excuse me, applicant is um, awarded a license. So under the, the, that person's probationary terms, they had to meet everything to qualify. Then the license is issued. Then it's immediately revoked and stayed and on probation for three years. So except for the first part that I said where you have to meet the licensing requirements, I read it as meaning still excluded, but then it's, um, it's ex she has a three-year exemption so uh, for three years because of her rehabilitation. But it's very similar. And then, um, so the last page under the order, the part we don't have is when the order became effective, if it was adopted. We don't have what we usually get from your office where there's the board president signs the order and the effective date. I don't have that in this packet. But on the last page of this document, she's excluded and prohibited for a period of three years from employment, presence in and contact with clients of any um, DSS licensed facility. But her exclusion is stayed for a period of three years. So if we look at three years from the date this is signed, it uh, should expire in February, February 2017. Right. We just don't know when it was adopted. It could be later. So she can um, go to a facility and practice there. And then there are five areas of like her terms and conditions. She has to abide by all laws and regulations of um, the um, community care facilities and licensing. Abide, abide by all laws of any courts. If she violates these, then um, it looks like she's um, subject to, yeah, a petition to revoke the exemption and probation. Upon successful completion of everything, she, um, she'll be free and clear, it looks like. So I think what my question is to Ms. Um, Holly is, when was this adopted? And um, 
is it, and, it, and what is your understanding of when it will expire? The three years will expire. Um, from my understanding, it, it is February because whenever the order was given and when they sent me the petition, when I called, they said that the, it started the day that the administrative judge signed it. So that's the only date that I've ever, that I have myself. So, um, just a little unusual because we usually have that cover sheet. And um, they, uh, the Department of Social Services has their own equivalent to an Office of Administrative Hearings, and I'm not that familiar with it, but I believe they still have to practice under the Administrative Procedure. And um, so I, I believe there's a document that would say 30 days later if it was adopted. That's how we do it, and before your board and other boards. Thank you. Does that help? Thank you, yes. Does that conclude your question? Yes, Your Honor. And Ms. Bergmeier, do you have any additional questions? I don't. Okay. Um, Ms. Holly, did you have any witnesses or additional evidence that you wanted um, admitted today? Um, I, I don't have any witnesses, but I do have my document. Uh, well, the only way that I could print it out that shows that I am in the program, the EA program. And then I also have um, a certificate of completion for an annual federal tax refresher course, which um, gives me the ability to practice in front of the IRS, but limited practice. And also um, verification that my CTEC and my P10 was renewed because the one that you guys have in the packet, it's expired now. So I have the proof that it's been renewed again. And did you happen to bring copies of those? You no, know, I didn't. And I just can give you guys the documents and... Okay. Um, so if you want to have them admitted, you can bring them yes. up to me and I can number them. Um, but we'll have to keep them. Okay. Okay, I will go ahead and do that and let me number them as well. All right, so the first document I have, which I will label as A, is it's a certificate that says Annual Filing Season Program Record of Completion. It's got Ms. Holly's name and it indicates that she participated and completed the necessary IRS um, continuing education requirements related to Form 1040 Series Federal Tax Return Issues ethics and other federal tax law for the 2016 annual filing season program. Is that something that has to be updated annually? Yes. Okay. All right. So that is A. Is, um, can you explain what this document is, Ms. Holly? It, that is um, showing that my P10 is active for the 2016. 16 tax season or 2017. And when you say P10, is that P T I N? Yes. And what does that stand for? Um, or if you can explain what it is, it is, it is a um, a license or number that the IRS gives you that every tax return that I prepare, that is to um, keep track of me and the tax returns that I do. So it's like a identify it's an identification number okay. for um, the tax returns that I prepare. Okay, thank you. The next document, which I will identify as C, um, is a CTEC tax professional registration, tax professional personal account. Um, same thing, can you just explain briefly what this is? Um, that is uh, an equivalent, but for California. Okay, and this is a proof of payment? That's actually proof that my license, my um, CTEC is active until um, October 31st of 17. Thank you. The next document is D, which is a certificate of completion from H&R Block authorizing and awarding Ms. Holly um, in recognition of successfully completing the annual federal tax refresher 2016. Anything else you need to explain about that um, document? That is the uh, course that you have to take 
to have the um, status of to be able to practice in front of the IRS limitedly. So that's my cert completion that I'm in that uh, program again from the Exhibit A. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Uh -huh. And the last set, it looks like, are these all, these four pages, are they, um, or three pages, is this one document? Yes. And can you, I'll mark it as E, can you explain what it is? What that is, is uh, my online um, access to the course that I'm taking for the enrolled agent. Um, status and it's an online course that I that's the only proof that I could get for um, showing that I was I'm in the course because H&R Block paid for it for me so um, that's that's the only proof that I could get is to just log on and show that that's my account and it's my name for the courses and then it shows that it's the EA courses that I've taken. It's a three part course, which is um, biz practicing, like doing taxes for businesses, um, for individuals, and then um, representation in front of the IRS with the enrolled agent um, status. That is the equivalent of a tax lawyer. Um, I can fully perform in front of the IRS, I can go to court for my clients without their them being there. So it's it's a prestigious entitlement entitlement for the IRS. Okay, thank you. So for the record I've marked those as E1, E2, and any additional questions from any of the board members? Bergmeyer, anything further? Um, I have a note on my notes that this conditional exemption with the Department of Social Services ex um, expires on May 18th, 2017, and it's in Section C somewhere, in Section C. But I don't have that page flagged. I'm sorry about that. So I wanted to just complete that part of our questioning earlier. Other than that, I, I do not have any questions. Okay, anything further based on that clarification? No, anything further, Ms. Holly? No. Okay, so the matter is um, deemed submitted and we're off the record. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to go ahead then and take a lunch break now and reconvene at 1245.